Our next guest is a musician, activist, entrepreneur, and reality star. Ow. Now you can catch her hosting her new late night talk show, and we can't wait to hear all about it. Please welcome our girl, Amara La Negra. Amara! What are you doing? Oh Fantastic. My. Oh, we, we're doing good, but you're doing better, Amara. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your pregnancy. You're expecting yeah. twin girls. Yeah! Oh Felicidades! Amen, oh amen. I'm super excited. Um, this is definitely a new stage in my life. I'm trying to figure everything out. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. You already know how this goes. Okay. <laughs> you know what? They said you're planning your baby shower for the date 2 2 22. So why is that date significant to you? I just thought that the numbers, their angel numbers, I thought that the numbers yeah. were pretty. And then I was like, well, 2 2 22 for my little twos. So something oh, memorable. That's so good. Aww. I love that. I believe in angel numbers too. So I have to ask, you say you're nervous, you're excited and all these things. What have you been doing to prepare for the babies? In the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really doing too much because it took me a really long time to finally process the fact that um, you're going to be a mother, you Aww. know? Um, but now so at this beautiful. point, I don't know, it's happening, like that motherly instinct, uh, I'm starting to nest, like I'm nesting now and I'm just like cleaning everything and like, oh my God, my baby's just coming, like <laughs> I need to get the crib, I need to get this. It's just, I don't know what's happening in my body, but um, you know, I guess the motherly thing is happening. <laughs> that is so exciting. It is happening yeah. whether you like it or not. And from a mom of twins, girl, hold on. <laughs> Help! Um, <laughs> Amada, after having a miscarriage, how were you able to deal with that difficult time? So at the moment, you know, um, it was very tough for me. I, I wasn't really prepared for it or expecting it. But I guess once I was told that, you know, I had a miscarriage, um, and that's when I really got like depressed and I was sad, like I, I was with child and I lost it, but it was even kind of worse and good at the same time, but worse when I was told, okay, so you were pregnant with triplets and you lost one, oh. your miscarriage was one out of this same pregnancy. Wow. So they were like, well, you still have two. I'm like, two what? They're like, well, you have twin girls. I'm like, wait, how did this even happen in the first place? Like I wasn't wow. ready for it. So. It was a, like a roller coaster of emotions, sure, and that's I why I think it's taken me like a little bit longer to process the fact that this is still really happening. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. I love how transparent you've been. You actually revealed that you're going to be a single mom by choice. But I want to help like women understand what does that mean when you say a single mom by choice, and how did you come to that decision? Well, sometimes you have to make the, the whatever decisions you think is going to be best for your child. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and things didn't happen the way that I planned. I'm kind of corny. I really believe, I guess, you know, in marriage and just doing things step it's by not step. not corny and at all. It didn't happen in the order that I wanted, but sure. that's part of life. Things don't always happen the way that you plan. It doesn't mean that it's not meant for you. You know, I'm still I'm still a young woman. I will still have many opportunities to find a good man. And, and who knows what the future holds, but at this moment... You know, mama has to do it by herself. My mom did it by herself and she raised me and I'm fabulous, okay? That's I get that. I, I get that. I pull through. <laughs> I get that. But when you say single mother by choice, I know that I have so many friends that are single and they still want to be mothers. Um, right. I'm sure that they would be so inspired by your journey. How did you go about this? Did you look into fertility treatments? How did you go about it? No, I was in a relationship. We were in a relationship okay. for like uh, about a year. And, um, you know, once the baby, the babies came along, you know, things happen, the, you know, long distance relationships sometimes can be very difficult. Yeah. And it, there was just like a whole bunch of things happening at the same time. That's why I'm like, you know, who knows what the future holds. But at the moment when I saw that it was unstable, I said, look, I don't, I don't want to bring any type of traumas to my babies. Yeah, I don't want to bring smart. any type of emotional. So I think it's best that we go our separate ways yeah. and maybe, you know, Let's see, maybe I will have you involved in their life somehow because I also don't want them, I don't want to repeat the cycle of the broken home either. So I do want him to be part of their lives. So it's just a process. You know, you have to think it through. There's no guidebook on how to be a, a mother. You, you just know. figure it out so along true. the way. Absolutely. So now, we know you and your mom are very close, but she wasn't initially on board with your pregnancy news. How is she feeling about it now? Oh, first of all, these are her kids. That's the most important part, okay? I'm over here just having the babies for her. So I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> but in the beginning, I think it wasn't that she wasn't excited. Yeah. It was more that she was concerned and more of the, you know how mothers have really high, ex- especially coming from an immigrant household, they have these high expectations for all the things that you're going to yes. become and do and da 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 yeah. and, and it was like, are you sure? Like, what are you doing? And it, you know, she still yeah. thinks I'm like 15. I feel like I was 15. I'm like, I'm a grown woman. I should be able to have a child whenever I'm ready. Yeah, but right. um, she's been great and she's been my biggest support system. And I'm so grateful to have her. That's so great. That is wonderful. Amara, now let's talk about something else. Before you got pregnant, you had this amazing weight loss. Tell us about it. Girl, I tell you. Okay? You look amazing. You know, <laughs> I feel that also losing a couple of pounds I don't know what happens to my body, but my body was like, we are ready. (laughs) Um, But yeah, you know, I I went to the Dominican Republic. I also found out, you know, I had fibroids. I have a tumor in my liver. Um, You know, my kidneys don't function necessarily. Very fantastic. Um, And there are things that you don't necessarily mention or make it public because I just feel like, the you know, a lot of people want to know just for gossip, not because they're really concerned about your health, yeah, you know? Right. So I had to do what was best for me, and I had to get my act together. And um, and right after losing 60 pounds, wow. I already gained 27 pounds back <laughs> with these hey. babies. But you yeah. have a good reason, though. You it's got a good reason. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love it. Now, Amara, we actually saw a more vulnerable side of you. I feel like you've always been just super transparent she and vulnerable. And just Always. Hard on your sleeve kind of person, but we saw it even more on the last season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. Why did you decide to show that side of yourself? I'm just in a different place in life right now. Like, I, you know when you start feeling grown and you feel like you don't have to, like, fake it and you yeah. don't have to give excuses or explain yourself to people. Mm-hmm. You just want to be genuinely you. And I'm there, like, I'm at the space where I'm like, look, my life is not perfect. You know, it looks so much better on the Instagram, you know, when you Photoshop everything, but that's not necessarily <laughs> reality all the time. Right. It doesn't matter how pretty you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter none of that. You still struggle. You still get depressed. You still cry at nighttime in the shower. Like, and I just wanted to show that, you know, um, my father hasn't been in my life. I have daddy issues to a certain extent. I have weight issues. I have all types of issues. And I'm just trying to get my life together and become the best success story of myself that I can be. But so great. it's not easy, especially when you're in the spotlight and everybody's ready to judge you because right. it's entertaining mm-hmm. for social media. That's so true. Well, talking about success, let's talk about your new Nate late night talk show called Don't Cancel Me on Fuse. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Is this something you've always <laughs> wanted to do? <laughs> yes, Mama, most definitely. You know, I've always said, like, I don't want to put any limits to myself. I want to try every single thing that I can imagine. Like, I have my podcast, Exactly Amara, on iHeart. I have my TV show, Don't Cancel Me, on Fuse. Um, I don't want to put limits to myself. I want to try as many things as possible, from movies to TV shows to everything. And God gave me an opportunity of being able to have this TV show, this platform, where I can also be transparent, unfiltered, uncensored, zero taboos. We talk from sex to relationships to immigration to finance to everything that you can imagine. Um, and we talk about it very honestly. Like, I don't sugarcoat anything. Um, and it's not necessarily PG-13. It may be a little bit rated R. It's late night. It's late yeah. night. You need it's that late sometimes. Night. Well, yeah. we got a clip. You know. let's, let's watch this clip from your show. Don't cancel me. I don't she know said. what's happening these days, but for some reason, I feel that they keep trying to push women's rights back. Like, they keep trying to take away from us, discredit us mm-hmm. to a certain extent. I don't like to generalize because it's okay. never good, but... Do you feel that they keep trying to push us back? I just feel like when it comes to women in in a hold, it's always going to feel like that. It's always going to feel like we're taking steps back opposed to taking forward because, for one, again, the unity is not as strong as it needs to be. So you think men are more united than women? Um, I don't say more united. I say more business. Now, Amara, you started out as a dancer at only four years old on Sabado Igante Show. Yes. How did that experience prepare you for show business? You know what? Um, first of all, your Spanish is on fleek, but I love oh, it. Oh, really, Amara? Yes, girl. You heard that, Sabado Igante. <laughs> Thank you, dear. But no, um, being on Sabado Igante, it was an amazing platform. It was it's one of the biggest well-known Latin yes. TV shows for the Latin community. You know, it was on air for like 40 years. Mm-hmm. and. Wow. It really means a lot to the Latino community. In my case, it prepared me because of the work ethic I learned. I was able to...
look to surround myself with a lot of big celebrities and celebrities, artists, you people of, of status. And it showed me how humble a lot of these people were. And um, I think that that was the most important thing. I think that that's why I also remain, you know, as, as simple as you see me, because I've seen the biggest from the biggest to the smallest and... It's all about your work ethic and how passionate you are about your craft. Aww. I love that. I was a huge fan of Sabado Gigante and Don Francisco. Yes. Now, since you arrived on the scene, you've been shattering glass ceilings and leading important conversations on Latinx representation in Hollywood. Yep. Um, do you see the movement progressing? I see the movement progressing uh, a little bit. Do I wish that the change would be drastic? Of same, course. Same. Um, I think that in the beginning, the conversation was more like in your face. And unfortunately, a lot of these topics become, it's like a trendy thing. Mm -hmm. When it's hot, everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody has something to say. And then little by little, it fades off. That's why I'm very passionate about it. And I'm still going to be in your face because I feel like there's still a lot of things, a lot of progress that we need to do. But I'm grateful to know that I was at least one of many to be able to start that that conversation and push forward so, so that more Latinos like myself and Afro Latinos have opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Who would you say are some of the women you saw on and off screen that inspired your journey? I'm dying to know. Oh my gosh. Well, mainly in the entertainment industry, I always remember growing up, obviously I had Celia Cruz, Mili Quesada, yeah. Olga Tañón, La India, yes. all these great Latina artists. But um, <laughs> being born in Miami, my mom always, she didn't understand English, but she understood the energy right. so and the music. So I was a big fan of like Donna Summers, Tina Turner, Whitney Houston, Gloria Gaynor. Yes. All these strong, powerful women breaking barriers and making themselves be heard and seen really inspired me to feel like one day I'm going to be like one of them. So I love definitely that. them. I love yeah. that. And Amara, you are influencing this next generation. You even did a children's book titled Amarita's Way. Um, it is so inspiring and it actually teaches young oh, girls so about self-love. Now, as you prepare for motherhood, what do you want to teach your girls when it comes to self-love, culture, and life? Oh my God, you know I'm already stressing and I'm ready. <laughs> I, I yes. am going to Papa Dios, Amen Padre. Oh, I am going to raise, <laughs> I am going to raise two strong women, uh, two business yes. women. I want them to be Amen. like their mother, um, but I want them to know their worth. I want them to know how powerful, how beautiful they are, how impactful they can be to the yes. world. Um, and the most important thought, the the most important thing is definitely to love themselves because society is always ready to, you know, make you feel that you're Preach. not worthy. And that's where mama will be right yep. there to let you know you are black, you are beautiful, you are strong, you are smart. All those affirmations, I am telling them already. Good. Yes. From within the womb, she's preaching about <laughs> it. I love it. I love it. I love yes. it. So Amara, happy thank for you. you so much for stopping by. You're such an inspiration and so much fun. Uh, now be sure to check out the season finale of Don't Cancel Me when it airs February 2nd on at 11 p.m. on Fuse and Fuse Plus. <laughs>